totally not live from our remote homestead, this is the Off Grid Prep Family Podcast. On today's episode, the amount of repossessed solar panels that are on the market right now for a hundred bucks a panel. It's incredible. Just look for the... Like, you still need to go to town. You still need to buy groceries. Maybe you still need to go to work at an office and not smell like wood smoke and look like you just rolled out of yes, a tent. Yes, yes. If it's only the two of you, maybe you don't mind pooping in a bucket. Yeah, it's it's really not a big deal. When no judgment. When all the kids have filled the bucket, <laughs> back to the bucket. It's always back to the bucket. That's my line. Dare. Can you tell that's my line? It's my line too, babe. It really is. <laughs> if you've spent your whole life surrounded by modern conveniences, never having to think about where your electricity or water came from, if you've never had to give a second thought about being able to run any and all appliances you wanted to whenever you wanted to use them, if you're used to flicking a switch for heating and cooling and have spent the majority of your life right around 70 degrees, Making that leap to off-grid living can seem pretty daunting. And it is daunting. We want to help people figure out how to do it as smoothly and comfortably as possible. Nobody wants to poop in a bucket for the rest of their lives. Well, maybe you do. I don't know what you're into. I don't know what everybody (laughs) likes. But I don't. I have pooped in a bucket hundreds and hundreds of times. My children have pooped in a bucket. (laughs) Stop. Sorry. It's the truth, though. Because, Dad, the bucket needs dumped is like, at the end of a day of <laughs> logging, is the most soul-crushing phrase you can hear. But that bucket needs dumped, and that's like a really big thing. And you're gonna do it because Mom can't lift the bucket. I'm, Mom can't lift the bucket. <laughs> so who else is gonna lift the bucket? And it's not like it's a bucket of solid poop. It's a bucket of poop and shavings. There's a whole process. It doesn't stink. It doesn't stink. It's actually a really neat thing. However. There are better options. It's not the way you want to spend your life hauling water, emptying poop buckets, and living by candlelight. We know that you have bigger life goals than that. Well, we all do. It's romantic. And yes, I mean, it was romantic at first. That stuff wears off pretty quickly. But the beauty of human ingenuity is all the things that we've learned as humans and in society, these can be applied to off-grid life. It's all about having a reasonable plan, getting your priorities straight, and then acting on that plan in as swift a manner as possible to reduce the amount of time you're basically camping. A quick shout out to our first sponsor today, Thrive Life Freeze Dried Foods. They sell non-GMO, American-made, high quality freeze dried food for the deepest layer of your food preps, lasting up to 25 years in your pantry. Use the referral code on our friends and affiliates page for a 15% discount on your first order. We've used Thrive Life for more than a decade and the quality is really unmatched. Visit offgridprepfamily.com forward slash friends. Reducing your consumption and reliance on grid tied gadgets is the first step. For most of us, recreating a grid tied lifestyle with solar panels and batteries is completely unrealistic. It's possible, of course, I mean, anything is possible if you throw enough money at it. <laughs> I've I've seen systems that people have spent hundreds of thousands and I'd say the biggest mistake is chasing brands. There is an incredible amount of technology out there that's not necessarily the cheapest, but often is. And and it's about sourcing your own parts so that you can find the You can find things that actually meet your needs. Um, I've seen so many systems that it's just the the amount of, let's say the inverter goes in and it's a 5,000 watt inverter, but when you're living off grid, you rarely need more than 1,500 watts at any given time. That's- Yeah, and increasing your system's capacity over time is always an option. It is, But are you immediately going to throw 150 or 200 grand or more into your system? I mean, probably probably not. not. If you've got that kind of, I mean, unless you're talking about building a bunker, which I mean, yeah, we could show people how to do that. I would love to build a bunker. (laughs) However, if, if it's most people who want to get off the grid as we did, and we've lived off the grid in a number of places, you want to spend 
the least amount of money possible while tr still trying to maintain a good level of quality. And if you can avoid financing, fantastic. Yeah, no financing. Yeah, so, I mean... The best to... deals can be found on repossessed solar panels. Actually, yeah, we just recently did that. I yeah. didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know <laughs> that... Well, when was the last time we made payment? Okay. We, we don't have a mortgage. We don't have any loans. It's been hard work. Yeah. And there's been a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. But... but yeah. The amount of repossessed solar panels that are on the market right now for a hundred bucks a panel. It's incredible. Just look for those because there are people making bad decisions with money they don't have and you might as well take advantage of it. You know what? It's not, yes, but it's not even poor decisions. Like I, I had a friend who, uh, well, an acquaintance of mine and he told me, you know, these, these people, they get these repossessed solar panels. Um, they had some because uh, the family put it in and they were doing a grid tide thing. So this is a totally yeah. different market. Grid tide is not the same as off grid. The grid tide cell, from what I've seen, is you know you're you're developing a plan. It's like trying to sell a utility. So there's a whole bunch of numbers. There's graphs and charts of what when you're off grid, you just you just want some bloody power. That's it. You don't yeah. care. I want no bills. Yeah. So we think the wisest course of action, if you have the luxury of currently being on grid tide utilities, is to start the diet now. Totally. There are so many things to get used to when you're moving to your off-grid property or even accl acclimating to an off-grid lifestyle. Whether you're buying empty land or converting a property, you're going to be busy tired, mentally and physically fatigued. Oh, in, tell me about it. <laughs> in ways you have never imagined. You're going to grow new muscles. I didn't know that was a thing. Your suits don't fit anymore and it's they not because you gained weight. No, my pants fit. <laughs> well, they didn't for a while. There's a bit of a phase where you There's overindulge. Stress. I eat a lot of spaghetti. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, once you get acclimated and you kind of get into a new routine, it's a completely di different way of existing yeah so if you've never cooked any meals from scratch and you're used to relying on delivery and takeout multiple times a week which I totally was at one point if you just love to pop something in the microwave when you haven't thought ahead and meal plan you're just gonna be adding more stress onto an already stressful situation if you could even just come up with seven go-to breakfasts lunches and dinners that fit within the conveniences that you plan to have available, you're gonna be so much better off. If everything is gonna have to be cooked in your RV or on a grill, you need to figure that out now. Learn how to cook with cast iron and how to care for it properly or you're gonna be like really frustrated. There, there's there, a learning curve, Yeah, there is. And I mean, learning, that's an interesting point. Just learning how cast iron works and which pans to buy that's a whole separate episode. You can but, see our store well, for the ones that we in use. Short, this, is, this is how in-depth this stuff gets and how we're hoping to kind of break things down. Just make it easier. It is. If, well, if we've suffered, yeah. you don't have to. Well, just the one thing, the cast iron pans, right? Like we have one pan, it's a uh, La Crusade. It's we, amazing. We inherited it from a great aunt, some weird time. We've had it for 10, 12 10 years? years. It's amazing can't However, kill it ever they cost hundreds of dollars le crusade and they're worth it mm -hmm. however you're gonna give it to your grandkids we have this is the part this is what we're trying to to convey here the root of what we're talking about you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars we have two lodge cast iron pans that we bought on amazon we season them properly we season them well we take care of them they haven't warped they've been on our crazy old wood stove uh, yeah and Both they're the amazing. cook stove and the they, real wood stove. They, they'll they, take anything. They keep up. These pans, what I'm getting at is these pans that were a whole digit less. Like they were, I think, $89 on Amazon. It might have been $59. they are just as good. Yeah. And that's kind of the essence of what but we're But we also for. bought a lot of really terrible ones that eventually, oh, I think, ended yeah. up in a garage sale took, or the garbage. It took so much digging to actually find, like, the lodge pans are good, but... I can't remember. We tried a couple of yeah. brands and they were awful. Some of them you get, some of them are good, some of them aren't. Yeah. 
So if you have no idea how to style your hair without a half an hour of Dyson Airwrap blow drying, and you know your initial weeks or months at your off-grid property aren't going to allow for that, you need to start living without those luxuries now and figure it out while the rest of your life is still comfortable and familiar. I was, I was just, sorry, I was just getting a tone of urgency in your voice. <laughs> now, <laughs> do it now! <laughs> it's not un, unfounded. Like You still need to go to town, you still need to buy groceries, maybe you still need to go to work at an office <laughs> and not smell like wood smoke and look like you just rolled out of yes. a tent. Yes, oh my god. So you need to figure out that stuff now. That whole mountain man thing. It's what, not what a good that? look. What was that book that our son found? Uh, those people who live in the mountains, remember? It was like fur trappers. It was like a whole culture. Uh, the Appalachian. Oh, you're talking about like the Foxfire books? Yes. yes. We love the Foxfire books. However, just do a quick, You don't yeah. want to live like the Foxfire books. No, you can. And it's beautiful. And there's a beauty in it. Yeah, but, but some of us still want you... Amazon. And we still want to be able to go to the playground and occasionally go to the grocery store. When and you... not look like eyebrow raising crazy people. When you grow, you can have like the, the most amount of good in your heart and a smile on your face. And when you walk out to meet that delivery driver with a full beard <laughs> and like the trashiest clothes because they're your comfortable clothes yeah there's probably a whole system as to which t-shirt you know yeah and you were logging that day but logging. he doesn't know that he just knows he that you know. look terrifying he doesn't care he thinks you're gonna murder him yeah yeah and and that's the thing it's you have to it's it's a process of acclimation and maybe one day your kids want to like meet somebody and they don't want to look like crazy mountain men so basically anything in your current life that creates heat like the instant pot the toaster oven the microwave the water heater oven coffee maker your electric dryer slow cooker even things like heat lamps for your chicks you need a plan that will allow you to eliminate or replace every one of those items yeah. sometimes it's switching to propane or just buying a sufficiently large laundry line but you need a plan and you need to practice using that new system so that it becomes comfortable and second nature. Some items you may only have to give up for a short period of time. Like now we have a dishwasher and an electric coffee maker, but two it's a- Two deep freezes. We had to get a second yeah, deep yeah. yeah, but like our coffee maker, it's a particular model that I really researched that's more suited to off-grid living. Uh, that's episode 10 if you want to find out about off-grid appliances. But at first, we needed an alternative way to make coffee because obviously with seven kids, we were not going to do without coffee. Um, we can also use the Instant Pot, the air conditioner, the electric water heater, even an electric dryer when the sun's shining. And the, the reason we can do this is when we started our off-grid system, we cobbled together components. We, we spent the money we had on building an actual house and it takes so much more than you think. But Especially now. What we were what we were able to do over time, like several years we're talking about here, is eventually we were able to upgrade our battery pack and our yeah. system. And that was with diligent research and learning about products. And, and I had done this before, but even with my previous experience, experience, when we were trying to stick to a decent budget, I had to throw it all out the window. So it yeah. became a research project. And eventually we found the right system and yes, now we can, ru we can run virtually anything for an extended period of time. Yeah. Let's take one second to thank our second sponsor of the day, EMP Shield. It can protect any device you plug into it from a EMP, a CME, or a lightning strike. You can get a unit for your car, generator, or your whole home. And if you use code OGPF, to, you can get $50 off any unit. If you want the link, go visit our friends and affiliates page at offgridprepfamily.com forward slash friends. There are also things that you could just plan to run the generator for a short period of time if that doesn't bother you. I personally despise the sound of generators, so we try to only run ours for like an hour every couple of weeks just for like maintenance, but that is always an option. Um, anyways, reducing your consumption first makes the whole transition so much easier. Remember, you can always add to your renewable energy system, 
adding like six panels every year or another bank of batteries or a wind ge generator like that's easy it is it is trying to get the whole thing done at once trying to plan for five or ten years down the road it's nearly impossible to do it efficiently and affordably um, technology is changing it's still the panels are still getting better everything's getting cheaper it is the batteries are getting better the like everything's getting more accessible. and it would take away the magic of one day being able to <laughs> run your instant <laughs> pot day. which is amazing when it finally I, happens it I will absolutely it's magical yeah it is incredible that one day when you can run the electric coffee maker and the, in the two morning. giant freezers and, oh well, and there's no grounds it feels right? so good like when you have to boil that coffee cowboy style <laughs> it's good it's very strong there's a process you gotta avoid the grounds <laughs> uh it's you know to be able to run that just push the button yeah it really is it adds really a little magical. spark of magic back to modern life so after you've learned to reduce consumption um the second thing that we recommend is to try it out for a week or two even longer if possible. Camping for the weekend without any modern conveniences is very different oh, yeah. than camping for weeks on end. Uh, for me, uh, it's when it's time to start showering and doing laundry that things really take a turn. Suddenly, it's less fun. You're no longer camping. You're figuring out showers for nine people or however many kids you have. La laundry on a large scale and the novelty starts wearing off. We seriously recommend trying to create the living conditions you anticipate when you first leave civilization as closely as possible. If that's going to be a tiny house off the grid, find one on Airbnb and rent it for a week or two, a weird cabin in the woods. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be an RV or a canvas wall tent, Love which those. we've also lived in, uh, with no services, find someone with land in a similar climate and do your best to try it out. Mm -hmm. Whatever conditions you're anticipating, uh, find a way to recreate them as closely as possible. It's no different than any other research project. Yeah, it's pretty easy to lean on convenience foods when you're camping. Hot dogs, bagged salads, and a fruit tray that you prepared at home. Convenience items that we might not want to be feeding our families on a regular basis. How are you gonna cook like wholesome, healthy, budget conscious meals for your family without the modern gadgets and appliances that you've become accustomed to? <laughs> Cook cooking over an open wood fire <laughs> looks romantic on Instagram. It is not so. <laughs> bug it's awful. It, I mean, it's, it's it, nice once you get used yeah. to it anyway. There is a skill involved. Even cooking on our top of the line wood cook stove took a long time to master and every stove is different. You need to learn your stove, learn your chimney, your wood source. If a wood cook stove is your plan for preparing like the majority of your family's meals, purchasing it ahead of time and giving yourself even a few months to master the art of it would be a huge gift to give yourself and your family. So maybe your plan is to live in a trailer or an RV until you've built a home on your land. Learning the quirks and tricks of your RV stove mm -hmm. and RV refrigerator ahead of time. I mean, that'll save yeah. you a lot of headache and yeah. burnt or late meals <laughs> while you're already busy and exhausted from clearing land, pounding fence posts, and digging footings. Refrigeration is also a big factor if you're used to having a fridge or two and a big deep freeze. If at all possible, we would recommend trying to accommodate at least a small apartment-sized deep freeze. The newer models don't really use that much power and it'll play a big role in minimizing the number of trips to the grocery store. Yeah, living out of a cooler or a <laughs> tiny 12 volt fridge yeah. is cute uh, for a few days. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, but let me tell you, it's not that super fun um, for a very long time. Experiencing these things in a temporary way before your U-Haul is packed is the best way to figure out how these things will feel in a long-term situation while you still have time to come up with a smart solution. Yeah, other things to consider when you're doing your off-grid trial are things like um, hot water. Uh, the toilet is a big one. We've, ta yeah. we've talked about that. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that again. Yeah. Uh, heating and cooling, obviously, mm -hmm. huge. And even just square footage. Yeah. Like, when you're out when you've picked your spot unless you have picked like the most insanely expensive beachfront land in the 
highest value real estate area, you're probably going to have bugs and the immediate problem is square footage because you're all going to be inside way more than Especially you Especially your kids and yeah. like little kids. Yeah. It's just you unlivable. You can't live with bug spray and nets. Like you need a house to house, yeah. house yourselves in the bad season. And, and like as far as running water goes, we've even lived in warmer climates where the lack of running hot water was not a big issue mm. at all. Yeah. And we probably wouldn't have even used it if we had it. But if you live north of like Los Angeles, I'm going to guess that you like to have access to warm showers or warm baths at least every once in a while. Yeah. And if you don't, your wife or kids probably do. Yeah, when when, when she says warmer climates, we're, we're talking like, about our experience like Central Coast, America, Costa Rica, like yeah. Nicaragua. If you if you don't if you live anywhere in North America, you need hot water. Yeah, and do. heating up water on the wood stove, like Pa in Little House on the Prairie, it gets really old really fast. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. Um, obviously, it's possible. Lots yeah. of people do it. But knowing whether you're willing to do it for the length of time you might be waiting for a reasonably finished home, that's the big question to answer. If not, there are lots of solutions to hot running water for off-grid folks. It's nice to be able to make that decision and then find a solution that works for you before you're shivering <laughs> in the, all the stock water and tank. That's another story, anyway. <laughs> so step three, um, is to agree on your comfort level and priorities. Yeah. Uh, we all have different levels of discomfort that we're willing to endure, and there's a good chance that the things that rub you the wrong way might not bother your spouse. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. living in a very tight space might drive some people nuts while others don't mind at all. No, I mean, the, the land that we bought, that we currently live on, came with a small cottage on it. When I say small, I mean small. It was uh, It's an A-frame. It's 418 square feet. Maybe, to the tips. Like, yeah. an A-frame has no walls, so you would be shocked at how much square footage you lose It's in hard to fit a family of nine in 420 square feet. So we were a family of seven? Back then? Back yes. then, when we... <laughs> we like to have a baby every year or two. <laughs> so <laughs> That's just our seven goal. Seven people... <laughs> Seven people in a 400 square foot, really closer to 300 square foot A-frame with a loft. It was extremely challenging. Yeah, but some people, mm -hmm. that might not bother at all. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like after you do your trial, you need to do a super thorough debrief with your spouse and your kids. And you need to figure out what things they think were okay and what things were deal breakers. Like... I don't know. Do they mind? I mean, do they mind going outside of the yeah. outhouse in the middle of the night? Yeah. Um, the outhouse, that's a whole separate podcast. Um, but what will be, what will that be like? Like yeah. really in January, two feet of snow, four feet of snow on the ground mm -hmm. here where we are. What solutions can you come up with ahead of time to sand down the rough edges and make those, make those tough spots easier? Yeah. Um, maybe there's some things that you're willing to put up with, but you would rather make easier sooner rather than later um this is where you're going to start getting into the conversations that you're basically going to have every day for the rest of your off-grid life and, and i mean it, what we're doing here is providing what we think is a necessary service for a lot of people and i think a lot more people are going to want to do this for various reasons is, is get off the grid and, and figure this life out and it's not we want to try and help people do this uh, as easily as, as possible. Yeah, it shouldn't be the end of your marriage. No, but you have to be realistic. Yeah. R reality can be a really harsh thing. Yeah. I mean, what are you doing to what are you doing today? What's the priority? What project would make the biggest life improvement? Where's the smartest place to spend your money and time? It it can vary wildly on on who you are as a couple or family. Uh, and where you live. Yeah, if it's only the two of you, maybe you don't mind pooping in a bucket. Yeah, it's it's really not a big deal. When no all the kids have filled the bucket, <laughs> back to the bucket. It's always back to the bucket. <laughs> that's my line. They're, Can you tell that's my line? It's my line too, babe. It really is. <laughs> um, I mean, think about how much time you're you're willing to spend hauling water. Yeah. Right? Like. That's, that's not a good use of anyone's time, and time is your most valuable asset. Yeah. 
uh, like that's time and energy you could be doing something productive. Yeah. All because you don't have a $30 pump and a roll of PEX. Our water system, we've tried the jet pump. Our water system literally is just PEX and a, I think it was maybe a $70 pump Ooh, that we ended inflation. up with. Thanks. We have two now. Thanks, Biden. But, <laughs> but we, wrong country. Anyway, we have... Uh, a small little diaphragm pump. It's a little like rumbly, like you can hear it in the water lines, but it uses like a fraction of the water that uh, a standard jet pump that you'd get from a well yeah. drilling pump operation. Like, I mean, a tenth of the power. This yeah. is one of the many things we learned. And that was something, the amount of time I spent trying to fix this pump system and make it work properly, this is just one small snapshot. So, there are tons of things like that that look super romantic, but frankly aren't smart ways to spend your life, you know, to spend your time on if you're also trying to accomplish a job in any way and don't have access to, you know, like slave labor. Yeah, those should be your first priorities when you're setting up your off-grid homestead so that you can spend the time you won doing something that drives you forward instead of just like surviving. They, and they're going to be different for everyone. We have a lot of kids, so getting a washing machine in was a big priority yeah, for you're us. Yeah, the, you're the laundry guy. I don't do laundry. <laughs> be jealous, I'm the laundry ladies. guy. One day, and, and things change too. One day, mommy decided, I just don't like laundry. I'm just and not going to do any no. more laundry. And that was fine. And I do it, and the boys do it. and I have the babies, you do the laundry. That's the deal. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, for sure. And, I mean, this is there's a myriad of things like that like this that you're going to have to discuss to figure out you know how things work and it's going to change in ways that it cha I, I can't it's always evolving but you at least need to talk about it ahead of time you do or it gets really stressful you really have quickly. to prepare yeah i just looked at the time we're gonna have to continue this mm -hmm. in episode two um i'm afraid we have to wrap things up but we'll be continuing in the uh private server Thank you to our Patreon family for helping us get this show out. Mm -hmm. Check out patreon.com slash family if you want to show your love to the show. Um, Patreons also enjoy exclusive merch. Really cute out. merch. Yeah, really. It's You put a lot of work into yeah. it. Um, printables, ebooks, all that fun stuff. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and submit questions for future shows. Mm -hmm. And see what we're doing around the homestead. We'd like to leave you with the quote of the day which is from uh, Ben Franklin, when the well is dry, that is when you know the worth of water. And um, it's funny, I was just working on the water system today. <laughs> I, I couldn't think of a more apt quote, really. Bye, everybody. Bye.